All right, so welcome to our After Effects Skill Builder. Um, I had emailed out this link, so you will have this as all of your resources for the class. So before our session next Monday, I will send out another email reminder and have this link updated for you. So it has the Zoom link, it has our password, all that good stuff. So today's session is going to be animating a logo. And we're going to be using an existing file to create that animation. So we're going to be using a layered Illustrator file to do that. If you have your Spark page open, I actually have the practice file linked right there for you. So you can download those now. So a couple of basics just about animation and about After Effects in general. So there's gonna be two key things we work with today. The first thing is keyframes. Keyframes are points in your timeline that mark the beginning or the end of a transition. So think of it as things happen at keyframe A, they happen at keyframe B, keyframe C. In between those keyframes are tweens. Those are what happens between the keyframes. So I've included a video, you can watch this on your own, that just goes into more examples with keyframing. So when you talk about those tweens or in-betweens, there's three main types. The first is a classic. So a classic tween is something happens at point A, something happens at point B, and the classic tween is just that motion between there. Usually it's a very simple ease and out, a simple transition. You can do classic tweens in Photoshop, After Effects, and Animate. The next type is motion. So think about things where they kind of flow across the screen. It's more than just moving from point A to point B. Maybe they kind of rotate. Um, anytime an object moves between those keyframes, that is a motion tween. So Photoshop, After Effects, Animate all do those. The final type is a shape tween. So shape tweens are things like, you know, a triangle becomes a star, a circle becomes a square. The shapes change. You can do that in Animate. You can do that in After Effects, but it's not at all intuitive. You have to do several tricks to make it happen. It looks a little janky. So that's why I have, you can do it in AE, but it's, it's not great. So those are kind of the key things we're going to look at today. So demo today. And what I recommend is while I demo, you just make some notes. And what I mean by make some notes is jot down key steps or maybe draw a tool that I reference. Anything that'll help you do the practice later. If you try to practice while I'm talking, you will definitely get lost. Um, that's one thing I've kind of learned with this online technical training. So take some notes. You don't need to write down every word I say, but take some notes um, that'll help you get to these key steps. And then we'll have our practice time. So the practice time is where you'll get to open the same file I've been working with, take it into After Effects and start working with it. After our practice time and any QA you have, we will jump and talk about our project brief. So that is where we're headed for today. So I'm gonna switch over to After Effects. Okay, I'm closing up all the windows I got open. All right, so we are in After Effects right now. Um, I think there's some things about After Effects that tend to make people a little bit nervous. There's a lot going on. There's a lot that looks unfamiliar. Um, most everyone has at least seen Photoshop opened, even if they haven't really played with it but that's not normally the case in After Effects. So here's the secret that you need to know about After Effects. After Effects serves a lot of people. 
So there are tons of tools in here that you will never use, you will never need to use. They're not part of your workflow. My best advice to you is just focus on your work, on what you're doing. Um, it's great that After Effects serves so many people, but I think because of that, there's a real good chance that we look at other people's paper, so to speak, and we get out of our hula hoop for what we want to do. So just kind of have that focus of, here's what I'm creating and I'm focusing on these skills. So one of the first things you have is your workspace in After Effects. So by default, this is what your workspace should look like. If you're struggling to see the same things that I'm seeing, you can always go to workspace, default, and reset it to the saved layout. We are primarily gonna be working in a couple of different panels, and we will not be over here in these windows on the right-hand side. In fact, I'm not even gonna talk about those today. We are gonna stay over here on our project bin, here in our composition, down here in our layers, and here in our timeline. Now, one of the things that I think about After Effects that has kind of helped me get to know it is After Effects is kind of like Photoshop and Premiere got together and had a little animation baby. So a lot of the same things that you see as far as a layers, you're gonna see here in After Effects. A lot of the same things you see in Premiere as far as a timeline, you are going to see in After Effects. So we're gonna start out by creating our composition. And composition is the same thing as sequence. It's what you're creating, okay? We're gonna create our composition from footage. So the other piece of advice I have for you is, it is always a great idea to have a design somewhere else. It might be that you mock up something in Photoshop and bring it into After Effects and then build it in After Effects. But having that design kind of in your mind first before you start creating or your storyboard first is really gonna help you in After Effects. So I'm gonna start by clicking new composition from footage. And you should have access to these animated logo files. I gave them to you through our Spark page in a zip. So to access them, just double click that zip file and it will unlock everything. We're gonna bring in this later, but we're gonna start with this layer J logo. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm going to import it as a composition retain layer sizes. So I have already, and I created this in Illustrator, set up the exact size I wanted in Illustrator. Everything is the exact size I want. So I'm gonna have it retain all of those sizes and I'm gonna create a new composition. So I'm gonna hit open. Doesn't look like anything has happened, but wait. This is our composition right here. And so I'm gonna click on that and just drag it down to my layers. Now you can see the composition has came to what's called the stage. So right now it doesn't look like anything fancy, but if I double click, there are all of my layers. So all of my layers from Illustrator are now in here, each of them separate. So I can start animating those, okay? Now, I don't want this black background. I think to start work, I actually want a white background. So the way I change that is I go up to Composition, and composition settings. So in my composition settings, I'm going to change a couple of things in here. One is my duration. So I do not need my logo to go for a minute and 20 seconds. I think 20 seconds of an animated logo is fine. 
So here's how this works. This is just like Premiere. So it's hours, minutes, seconds, frames. So I'm going to set that duration and I'm gonna click this color chip and change my background to white. Everything else I'm fine with. The size we're using is 1080 by 1080. So this would be like an Instagram square. And I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so now our composition has a white background. Now, if I wanted to use this layer and, or use this logo, say on top of another video, I would want a transparency. If you look at the bottom of your composition, this little button here, and you can see it's like a little checkerboard. If I uncheck that after I'm done and then export it, I would export it with that transparent background and I would be able to use it on other videos. So I'm going to leave that white background on because that's going to make life a little easier for us. So let me just check in with you guys. Give me a thumbs up if you are doing okay. Let me know if you need anything. How are we doing here? Okay, doing good. Everyone's with us. Fabulous. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. So now we're going to start diving into animating this. Whoopsie. So right here, I can zoom in to whatever percent I want get a better view of my logo. This is my timeline down here going from zero to 20 seconds. Right now, nothing is happening. This is just a plain logo, but we're going to add those keyframes and start making things happen. We also have all of our, and I think, let's do, Oh, I think I grouped all of that together, didn't I? That is unfortunate. Um, hold on here. We will just leave that as is. That's fine. Now if I, let me mess around with some layers here for a second, y'all. I might bring in, that. Okay. Hmm. Let's edit this original. Hold on just a second. I forgot I was messing around with alignment. We're going to need to edit this really quick in Illustrator, which is okay. I was going to show you this later anyway, but we'll show it to you now. While this is going, I am just going to back this up. We're just going to close that. We're just going to kind of get to the, okay. So let me switch my share real quick for you. And I'm going to share, where is Illustrator? There we go. All right. So I had accidentally grouped everything here together. So I'm just going to quickly um, make sure that those are ungrouped. But what I did want to show you in Illustrator is all I've done here is created separate layers where everything exists. And so this layer here, I actually need to ungroup. And so that's going to allow me to manipulate these separately.
And so we're going to copy this. Oops. It's one of those like, you know, things go wrong when you're presenting and this is one of those times. So I at least need that on a separate layer. Okay. So the key is to create separate layers for all of your objects. And those are gonna allow you to manipulate those as separate layers inside of After Effects. All right, so that gives us, that gives us a couple things to play with. All right, so I'm gonna save that. And we'll go back to After Effects. And I'm just gonna go back to where we were. Okay, so here we were, we were copied that. You get a nice little review of steps here. So that's good, that's good. We'll open this up. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but my cat needs some snacks right now, so she's hollering in the background. All right. I think I didn't quite get pure white. There we go. All right. So now we have our layered files that we can start working with. Perfect. All right. So we're going to look at how to animate each of these separately. And so I've kind of named them what they are, but you've seen me, you can toggle this eye on and off to kind of see which layers you're working with. So the kind of the, the big thing in After Effects are just simple transformations. So that's what we're gonna start playing with today so we can learn those transitions. So I'm gonna open up this sky layer and so I've just toggled each of those open. And now you can see I've got my transform. These little clocks, that's when I, I click those when I'm ready to set a keyframe. And notice because I'm selected on the sky, this becomes highlighted in the timeline. So I can apply multiple transformations to the same object. In this case, I'm gonna kind of do one thing to each uh, layer. So I'm gonna click my rotation, and then I can either manually rotate this, or what I usually do is rotate it down here. So there's our first keyframe. I got that when I click the timer. Now I'm gonna go down to four seconds, and I'm gonna rotate. And I'm just scrubbing over this, and you can see as I scrub over that, that blue circle moves. And I'll go down, Again, we'll do, let's say, eight seconds. And every time I add a new rotation, it adds a new keyframe. So these little triangles that you see here are my keyframes. If I wanna come back and manipulate them, I can come back and change each keyframe. And then we're gonna do a little experiment here. Okay, so to play this through, I'm going to move my playhead, that's this little guitar pick I've been dragging, down to the beginning of my composition, and I want to go ahead and play this composition. So to play the composition, all I need to do is press the space bar, and you can see that it's just rotating around that circle. Now it's slowed down a little bit because I have more time and then look how fast it went right there. So the closer my keyframes are, the faster the object is. I'll do the next one. So I'm going to get on the blue, open that up, open my transform, come back in here. And so one of the things you can do to kind of I mean, really, what do I have? I have circles that are moving. Not too, too super interesting, 
but there's my first keyframe. One of the things you can do to kind of make them more interesting is keep things moving in different directions, but not make it look like the first time your elementary school teacher got a hold to the PowerPoint and was like box transitioning and cube transitioning everything. And so this time I'm doing every two seconds and I could rotate these to the same degree if I wanted to, but I'm kind of just going through so you get an idea. So now when we move back, when I hit my space bar, it's gonna play through both and you can kind of see how those are all working together. Now, one of the cool things you can do is select keyframes. So I can select all of these keyframes. I just marqueed over them and move them closer together. So I can just keep selecting, move them closer together. That's gonna speed up those um, transitions. I can also select them, copy them, and I just use Command C. I've moved my playhead and Command V. So I can copy and paste keyframes from one to the other. So you can see this sped up the moving. It's kind of interesting to play with different speeds as you do these. So again, hit the space bar to stop and start. And this time, let's say for our gray one, I'm feeling extra lazy. So I'm just gonna select all of these keyframes on the first row and copy them up to the gray. There we go. So now those have the same transition. So now look how the blue and the gray move together. So this is how you can start to see motion and animation coming in. Now, all of those are examples of really just classical tweens, just point A, point B, and here's the, the simple transition you're doing. Now we're gonna get into some different ones. So let's play with this circle. So there it is. And I'm gonna say, by this point in the video, I want to see the circle. So we're kind of using this in the opposite way. So I'm gonna say, this is our position and our opacity at this point. So when it hits four seconds in, it's gonna be right there. It's gonna be 100% opacity. Now let's back this down. So I'm gonna go backwards in my keyframes this time. I'm gonna grab my circle and I'm gonna move it up. So you can see that altered my position. I'm also gonna add a keyframe for opacity. So we're gonna say it's gonna start at 50%. And I could also type that number in. So let's see what that looks like. So you can see it's fading in and it's popping in. So that's an example of a motion tween. Now that tween that we get here can also be manipulated. So I can pull out this handle and have that jog around a little bit more. So let's see it now. So now instead of coming straight down, it's gonna kind of swoop and move in. So that is a motion tween. We've just added a little piece of motion to that circle. Now I mentioned we have a video that we're gonna bring in. So here's a cool trick that you can do with video. I'm also gonna show you how you can import things directly into your project then. So I'm gonna hit Command I. This time I'm just gonna select that movie. It's gonna be as footage. I don't need to create a composition. So I'm gonna hit open. There it is. And I'm gonna drag this right below my letter J. And things are gonna look a little strange here for a while. 
So to show you what this video is, we'll just go ahead and play through. So this is just something I found on Adobe Stock. So basically what I'm gonna do is create a cutout of the letter J. So I'm gonna select my letter J. And with that selected, I'm gonna control click. I'm gonna go to my blending mode and I'm gonna change it to Stensa, Stencil Alpha. So as soon as I do that, you can tell that something has happened. I'm also gonna group those together. And you can see I've now moved that. Well, what's happened to the other layers? Well, they were just accidentally hidden by the stencil and we can move those up above the J. So this is all like a layers over here. And now when I play it back, here's everything we have. There's our video, there's our movement. And you notice the video ran out. So we can just extend this on down in our timeline. Maybe, oh, nope, we can't. <laughs> I cropped it for size. So I'd have to go in and edit that. So that gives you some very basic compositions. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And so when you save things as an After Effects project, you get a .aep file. And like any other layered file, I could now open up this animated logo project at any point in time and play with it, experiment with it, do whatever I want with it. To render this out, all I need to do is go up to composition and I'm going to add it to my render queue. So now it's getting ready to output. I'm outputting it as this layered J logo. It's going to my desktop. I'm going to hit save. Your output module here is always good at lossless, so that's fine. And we're going to hit and best settings. And we're gonna render this out. And so you can see it's pretty decently quick for rendering. Um, it's not something you can do in four seconds. And because we didn't click our little transparency, we are gonna have a white background on this, but that's not the end of the world. And off it goes. All right. It's like magic. So let me share with you what that final looks like. Go to my desktop here. And so it's always going to convert from the .mov file, but this can now be imported into Premiere. I could use this as any type of logoing I wanted on something. Um, I would probably again take away that background, but here is our finished project. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that and stop the share. I am going to.